Hey everybody, what's up? It's me again. Uh, this is the second step at this. Uh, it's actually been a couple of, yeah, several days since I did one of these. Uh, I did do some work. Uh, I, I did do a lot of recording on Monday, but that was mostly me trying to get uh, this new setup I have uh, lined out, in case you haven't noticed. Um, I think it's pretty obvious, but yeah, I... Uh, I, I was really disappointed with the audio I was getting just filming off of my phone I, I and also getting a complaint or two about it. Not like complaint, complaint, just a uh, buddy of uh, mine at work that subscribes. He was like, dude, I, I have a lot of trouble hearing you sometimes. So I'm hoping this uh, kind of, street, you know, helps that issue and also just kind of streamlines my uh, production process a little bit instead of having to get stuff off of my phone onto the computer and losing videos while doing that I can record straight onto my computer and just upload that to YouTube and I'm, I'm hoping that'll kind of make things a little bit easier going forward and you know just and improve oh you know the overall audio quality as well uh, but getting, now that that is out of the way, uh, we're going to talk about our book for today, which is Arena Manager by Chad Opo. Uh. Ooh. There, there, there we go. All right. I, I, I was really kind of trying to get a good, uh, picture of that on there because, uh, I actually think the cover art on that is uh, pretty cool. All right, so Arena Manager. This is uh, an is a case story. Uh, very much so it is a case story. Uh, we follow uh, our protagonist, Frank. Uh, he has a last name, but they kind of discard that in the first chapter. So, And it's an 800-page book that I've been reading on. Uh, yeah, it's been a good like eight or nine hours reading on. So I, I, I don't remember what his last name was, and it's frankly not all that important. Uh, but uh, we follow Frank. As he's When we first meet him, he is in Wyoming working in a mine, and he has just served divorce papers from his ex-wife, which... As it turns out, he's kind of happy about that part, but he finds out it's not visitation day with his three boys, who he dearly loves, so he's a little sad about that. But he is taking a portal from Wyoming to visit his girlfriend in Bristol, England, which this is kind of something different, and it's like, wow, that's an interesting kind of thing. I wonder what they're, what they're doing with that. And it it basically kind of winds up being more, there, there's an accident, and it winds up being just MacGuffin to get him off of Earth, pretty much. Because uh, we don't explore that whole concept a lot, which, it's an interesting concept, so I kind of wish we had. But uh, anyway, uh, so he actually winds up spending a undisclosed amount of time, or, well, I guess more undiscernible amount of time, floating in a uh, blank void, just kind of floating, not really knowing what's going on. And so, and then finally some disembodied voice is like, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. I tried to smite you, you can't be smited, and so just sends him to the world of Dorbrain, where uh, he takes on the role of arena manager. He gets a choice of what class he can take. Of course, he's locked out of all the magic classes, but and that actually winds up having a purpose, reason for it, which is interesting. And so he decides he's going to become an arena manager, which is different never really come across that i guess uh now i can kind of get a little bit out of the synopsis uh now it's time to maybe ditch just doing a synopsis and kind of talk about what this is this is uh kind of grimdark kind of lit rpg kind of harem but at the same time, not really being too strongly any of these. It's just kind of a very interesting story that is a blend of kind of, you know, several different 
uh, you know, subgenres without, you know, without leaning on any one particularly heavily. I mean, the lit RPG elements are interesting in that it's not necessarily really that the, you know, stat sheet stuff isn't really following him personally. It is following the company he's putting together. And while he intends this company to be more of a arena-going company and, you know, do his fighting in the arena, he winds up doing most of his fighting outside of the uh, arena as a mercenary, pretty much. Just, uh, it starts off with him uh, just trying to find a place to get established and try to learn the language, figure out what's going on. He meets this woman, uh, Leona. Well, not so much meets as he goes into her house and finds her on her deathbed with her infant daughter, basically not knowing what's going on, and he saves her life. He cleans her up, helps her through all of that, helps her recover, all the while not being able to communicate with her at all, which it, it's kind of funny to have, you know, the Leona just kind of rolling with it like... I don't know who you are, I don't know why you're in my house, but thank you. Uh, eventually, uh, once Leona is recovered and he helps her out uh, with uh, keeping the farm and doing some stuff around the farm, they make their way to a station. And it turns out if they there's these stations based throughout the world. And by going to any one of these stations, you can sell goods, buy goods. And it's all facilitated by kind of this larger, I mean, I guess you could call it an AI uh, entity. It, there seems to be something there, but we never really get into that in this book. I say in this book because in the afterward, the author said that he's well into the second book and probably working on it. It's probably going to be at least three, which this book itself is longer than some trilogies that I have read from independent authors. It is a long book. There is a lot going on. There is a wealth of extremely interesting characters. And it's an interesting and developed, I want to say world, but you don't really get, I mean, it's kind of, I want to say, has a better sense of realism in that you don't get, like, the greatest picture of the larger world you spend all of your time pretty much in one kingdom and you know the trials and tribulations of that kingdom is facing as it faces war or i guess really like invasion instability instability betrayal revolution it that there's a lot going on here. There's political intrigue. There's, you know, intrigue within the few arena fights that he does participate in. Like I said, as much as he wants to be an arena manager, he winds up using his, you know, skill set more outside of the arena than inside. And <laughs> frequently not for lack of trying. There's a lot of times where he's like, I... I just want to go compete in the arena and people are like no no sometimes it's because he's doing too good of a job and people are like yeah no we're losing money off of you and sometimes it's like you know he just has other things that he has to be doing so yeah very interesting uh like I said, there's a wealth of extremely interesting characters in here as he slowly builds his army. And, you know, he there's kind of a revolving door with them. You know, you get and introduce some interesting characters. They come in, do their thing for a while, and then they're like, Hey, okay, I've filled my contract. I'm leaving now. Which kind of, you know, it... it it, it gives it, I mean, he's building a company and a family, but it, not everybody stays. He doesn't take, you know, like he doesn't really, 
even some people that he does kind of integrate into the you know lar- you know inner circle of his little company family they still kind of go their separate ways every now and then they still die every now and then like you know you frequently get a sent it's not as bad as Game of Thrones, even though the author, I think, did kind of list that as an, you know, in, you know, one of his inspirations for this. It is not as bad as Game of Thrones. Not everybody dies. I mean, bad things do sometimes happen to some characters that, you know, we do get at least a little bit attached to or at least feel bad for because of, you know, the things that are going on with them. And so, yeah, like, it, it does have a little bit of that game, grim, dark Games of Thrones kind of vibe to it, but it's not as bad. Like, this author doesn't hate all of his characters. Okay, I might get a little hate for saying that, but that's the way I feel about Game of Thrones sometimes. But anyway, I am starting to run a little long, and there's still so much I could say about this. I haven't had to worry about spoilers because there's just so much going on here that I can just hit the broadest strokes and still not get into everything there is to say about this. But there aren't, it's, when I say there, it's got harem elements, he does have multiple partners that he kind of develops relationships with throughout the story. Uh, Leorna is one of, like, the main ones. But he really does more of a fade to black kind of thing or just kind of, you know, hits, like, some very broad strokes. So I would say that it's definitely not explicit. It's more implied. Uh, there is a lot of language uh, throughout the story, which I don't have a problem with, but if you do, be warned. And there's a fairly decent amount of violence in this story. Uh, I had a comment on an earlier video uh, just the other day where someone was like, oh, I tried out the first book. It was all right, but it was a lot more violent than I thought. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think. I, I guess I'm just a little... You know, I'm I'm a little used to the violence in my fiction to a large extent, and unless it's like really, really, really bad, I guess it just doesn't really occur to me. So, if I've recommended something that you feel is way too violent without saying anything about it, my bad. I will try more harder in the future. But anyway, we're getting to the 13 minute mark. Uh, I try to keep, I, I've been wanting to try to keep these uh, to 12 or less, but I have not been doing so great with that lately. But anyway, uh, but that is Arena Manager. It's a dense, long read, but well worth the time. Uh, great characters, great story, interesting world. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and say... Thank you for watching, especially if you made it this far. Uh, if you like what I'm doing and you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, tell me I'm doing a good job, comment, tell me I'm doing a bad job, or just comment, you know, tell me, you know, there's like this one little thing you're not liking, and I'd, I'll, I'll try to improve. I, I can't make any promises, uh, you know, any big promises yet. I'm still... I'm just a little bit past the one month mark, so I'm still bumbling my way through this. I'm hoping the new setup uh, helps is, you know, kind of a sign of, you know, making some progress. And uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. You have a really good day.